Hi, everybody. Good evening. Thanks for tuning in tonight. It's just going to be a short little Zodcast because I wanted to test the microphone out on something I haven't done with it in a while because it's never loud enough. So hopefully the volume is better tonight with something new that I'm trying out. And then I want to go over some new material that comes from a researcher named Stefan Nyberg. And you may have seen uh, Stefan's name around lately because he's on fire. This guy is doing some great zodiac killer research and when i first saw what he did he, he put out a paper on the exorcist letter and i read it he put it in uh, one of the zodiac a smaller zodiac group i'm in and i think he put it in a couple of bigger ones uh, i like the smaller groups better for a lot of reasons but uh he uh, you know i read it and i was just blown away by the you know the detail he put this out for free he doesn't charge for it uh, i'll put the link uh in this video for it and also if you go to the community page for my youtube page you'll see it in there um and i'll, I'll put the cover up here and i'm just kind of jumping right into things let's see it says concerning the exorcist letter this is the uh let me make it a little I'm trying to make it a little bigger maybe a little smaller so yeah this you know i'm sure some of you already seen this as concerning the exorcist letter a layman's analysis by uh stuff on nyberg and, and stefan's in sweden where like all these hardcore dudes are in places like Sweden or Iceland, all these, uh, you know, Norway, they always come from the, that, that place when they're doing the really hardcore uh, analysis of like handwriting, linguistics and all that. A lot of times these guys are, are uh, from that region, which is so cool. And, you know, so this is free. It, it's, uh, you know, he's, he's basically making a case for the exorcist letter being definitely authentic Zodiac. And he's, um, which most people consider that, that it is the, the last canonical piece of, of Zodiac correspondence was the 1974 exorcist letter. Of course, there was, uh, you know, some letters that came out in 1978, of course, 1980. Uh, you know, I know Richard Grinnell really feels pretty, pretty uh, comfortable that a lot of the, you know, those other post-1974 Zodiac communications are probably authentic as well. And I think Richard Grinnell makes a great uh, some you know does a great job in uh, putting all that on his website zodiaccyphers.com so uh, Richard I don't know if you've seen uh, Stefan's work yet or read this yet but man definitely check it out because um, I know you'll be really interested in it but of course uh, makes a case for the exorcist letter being authentic and he gets into the fact that, that he thinks that that uh, the exorcist letter was the killing off of the zodiac persona per se and that's been kicked around before he's not saying that's totally original but he does believe that uh the tip tip willow tip willow uh you know diving them into the suicidal grave is uh, you know he's basically killing off the character some people have said that you know that's the zodiac maybe committed suicide sometime after he sent the exorcist letter uh i don't he doesn't think so i don't either i think it was more of just killing off the zodiac persona that was created out of a comic book character. So, uh, you know, one way he does a lot of this analysis is that he used a handwriting software called hat and it's named after the guy that invented it. I think it's version 3.5 and it, it, it's, uh, it's free. It's a free software that this, this, I think, I think a guy in Germany developed it and it's, it's from what I know, it's pretty accurate, but you have to do it right. You know? So if I did it, it would be all screwed up. And if I did it, no one believed me. <laughs> that I that I skewed it or something, you know, um, and you know my computer probably couldn't even run it anyway. This little laptop probably couldn't even run it. I'd have better off be better off like running it on my curry coffee machine, trying to, you know, do this, this stuff. But I understand that it needs to be the letters that you feed into it need to be as, you know as clean as possible. No, uh, you know, page numbers, anything that you can do to make it the cleanest as possible to get the best results. So he compared the Exorcist letter uh, to like. I think maybe eight, eight to 10 uh, other, you know, confirmed Zodiac killer correspondences. And he got, you know, a lot of them got really high ratings. So that was just kind of backing up the notion that that is a, an authentic piece of Zodiac killer correspondence. Uh, you know, there's, there's a few cases out there where people might doubt it. It's definitely, you know, obviously one of the ones that used the uh, reference to the Mikado, of course, Tit Willow, Tit Willow, and then, Obviously, there was the, the little Zodiac Killer little list letter. So, you know, I've seen somebody try to propose before that maybe those two weren't authentic, but the others were. I don't know. It, it kind of goes all over the place. It's crazy. Uh, anyway, no, I spelled the uh, clue on the title the Zodiac way, and that is from the bus bomb letter. And, and yeah, Brie, you missed that because remember Zodiac said. 
uh, on November 9th, 1969, the, the Zodiac Killer mailed the bus bomb letter, and I'm going to talk about that in a little bit, to the San Francisco Chronicle detailing the murder of Paul Stein. In the correspondence, correspondence, he stated, if you wonder why I was wiping the cab down, I was leaving fake clues, C-L-E-W-S, for the police to run all over town with, as one might say. I gave the cops some busy work. He's remember he spelled B-U-S-S-Y, work to keep them happy. I enjoy needling the blue pigs. Um, so yeah, that was a Zodiac spelling you missed from the bus bomb letter. So, uh, I encourage everybody to read this. I think it's like eight or nine pages and he did, you know, I was just excited for this stuff he was doing. I actually had another slide made tonight that I'm going to hold off showing. And I wish I could, cause this is a great thing, but I, I looked at his Facebook page and I want, I want to make sure it's okay with him that, you know, cause this, is this fine i think and i think no one has made this fine before that i was going to talk about but now i'm hesitating because uh he put on his facebook page that it was coming so i didn't want to like upstage him because i haven't talked to him this time zone's different but i promise i'll, I'll get it out. if he lets me I'll, I'll ask him tonight if i can uh put out something else he found that, that is also related to the exorcist letter but i just think it was a great little find uh that that uh it, it, I really felt like for the for the first time in a while we're getting somewhere with with the zodiac stuff with a smart, uh, hungry researcher like like Stefan, and I was just excited about what he's done with with this uh, presentation concerning the Exorcist letter. Um, Ned did a small segment on his show on Black Box Online Radio for the uh, on Zodiac Killer Monday this past Monday show. So uh, go check that out on BBOR if you haven't already. You probably saw it because I know a lot of you know we have a lot of the same viewers here. But it was really good. So the way that I started communicating with Stefan, it's only been like a few weeks in this group was uh, he put the link out. I looked at it. I said, man, this is great. And of course, you know me, I'm always one track minded with uh, Zodiac Killer stuff now. And I said, hey, um, could you use hat software and compare the uh, the 2002 Don Cheney letter. We know what, what letter that is talking about Arthur, Arthur Lee Allen and the dialysis death, you know, the one we're talking about and the only good letter we have with Don Cheney's handwriting. I said, can you take that and run it through the hat software with, um, against a couple of different Zodiac letters? And, and, he, and he said, yeah, you know, sure. Uh, which ones? And I, I can't remember which ones I told him. Uh, I, you know, I think I said uh, probably the, you know, a Paul Stein letter, one that came with a piece of Paul Stein's bloody shirt because th those are hard to beat, right? And uh, so we said, yeah, I'll do it for sure. And I think I might have also suggested doing the Melvin Bell letter. You know, that one has different handwriting on it, but it did. That one also came with a piece of Paul Stein's bloody shirt. And uh, so he he humored me, and he ran the uh, 2002 Don Cheney letter against um, these two Zodiac letters, and I'm putting these on the screen. And the first one is the Zodiac Killer Z13, my name is letter that came out April 20th, 1970. And it got a score of, and this is just, this is how the scores are printed. It says a uh, relative similarity is what they call it in the hat software of 77.8. So the Don Cheney letter versus the Zodiac Killer Z13, uh, you know, of course that had the my name is cipher in it with those with the codes up there, got a 77.8. And this this shocked Stefan. He was not expecting such a high score uh, versus, you know, Cheney versus that letter. And I trust this guy to run this stuff right. He doesn't have any extra grind. He's never promoted a suspect, uh, never mentioned a suspect. And I don't, I barely even know him now, but I just thought he did good work. So he also runs the Cheney letter against the one on the right, which is Zodiac Killer's bus bomb letter. Just the, uh, for the page one is the one he was working with. And of course, a, a Zodiac Killer's bus bomb letter is a multi-page letter, but he was just comparing it to the first page. And that got a relative score of 78.6 versus the Don Cheney letter. So you have two definitely canonical, non-argued Zodiac correspondences here scoring very high. They scored higher than some of the letters that he was comparing the Exorcist letter to versus other Zodiac stuff where he was getting maybe a 50, 56 scores like that so it surprised him he told me that like i was not expecting that not that he was being a naysayer or not he was totally just you know not invested in either way but he did not expect these two high scores versus that letter 
Would I like to run against all of them? Yeah. But, uh, you know, I can't ask too much of the guy. And like I said, if I did it, I'm going to screw it up. But these are the scores from his software. Uh, he'll back that up. And, you know, if anybody else wants to download it, play with it, hey, go for it. But this is what he got. 77.8 and 78.6 against that. And, of course, it would be nice if we had, you know, more handwriting from you know who, but we only have that one letter. But uh, thank you, Stefan, for even humoring me to, to run that. But super cool uh, that, that Cheney has such a high match against these two. And, you know, obviously he, he wrote that, you know, the one letter in 2002 versus these that were from, you know, 1969, 1970, respectively. Uh, that was uh, pretty damn cool. So that uh, was a finding that he did for me. So uh, we'll hopefully keep, keep that going. But he made another discovery that I thought I could mention tonight, but I'm going to wait because I saw his facebook where he might be waiting i don't think he's going to do it himself but i want to just get permission first uh but it's kind of a, a really neat find it's not a cheney related find but it's it's cool uh zodiac related stuff that this guy's doing so definitely uh he, he he's hot on the scene man he's going to be like the next um misty johansson tahoe 27 type stuff i mean stuff that like tony Danelli helped me with is where this guy's going so wow i mean look at those scores against those two he didn't expect it so he's worked with a lot of this stuff so he knows that you know you wouldn't just throw in a letter that you wrote or something and get a high score and uh so uh, that bears mentioning to you know just to just to look into some more so i was really really happy so absolutely go check out and i'll leave it uh his work on the uh, exorcist letter and uh it's on scribbit but i think you can download it like if you if you uh, view it on scribbit i think a lot of there's a lot of pop-up ads it's kind of uh kind of crazy but if you download it the ads won't pop up so definitely you want to check this out so i will definitely come back on when he'll let me find do this other fine but he's like so into it now he's finding all this new cool stuff but i wish i could wish well, i wish i could put up this other slide but i'm gonna wait uh you know what ross he did um you know, by the eye, yeah, I think it's a good, it's a good match. But actually, he did run Cheney, the Cheney letter against the Exorcist letter, and it was only in the twenties for whatever reason. I don't know why, because the Exorcist letter it looks like that same classic Zodiac style, uh, like you see in the Bus Bomb letter, and uh, it didn't rank that high versus that letter. I don't know why. I don't know why. Um, you know, I still think it's him. Maybe he was trying to disguise it somehow. That many years later. I know when the exorcist later came like exorcist later came out and the FBI files, it said that they, they could not definitively call that a confirmed piece of Zodiac correspondence back when, whenever, you know, the envelope and the letter uh, that's on in an FBI file for the Zodiac. I don't know why maybe at the time they, they just weren't that sure of it, but I think the, the, the writing looks just like bus bomb, but I don't know how the software works. It picks up on the curvatures and the stylings and, and stuff like that. But, um, Oh yeah, don't forget about the ABC letter. The ABC letter got it, got it all over it. Um, but yeah, that's pretty cool. So I'll go back and look at some of the comments because I missed some of them. Look at the left hand margin; gnome's perfect. Yeah, yeah, that's the point. The left hand margin is almost perfect. I don't know if that you know line grid. You know what I believe? Of course, the Zodiac killer used graph paper under his. Uh, on his light table to construct the ciphers. That's why everything's in neat rows. You would have had to have had it on a light table or an engineer's table. Who would have owned one of those back then? Maybe a mechanical engineer. Hey, Mike. Brady, do you think you're going to catch me? Like, <laughs> you know what? I'm going to make a confession. Uh, Speaking of the exorcist letter, when I read that, I did that last video a while back, I did uh, not read the the uh, quote from the Mikado accurately. So I'm going to redo it. I, I pulled it. I'm going to redo it because I, uh, I mispronounced one or two things in the reading of uh, that area from the Mikado. Oh, thanks. Thanks for stopping by. It'll be up again later. So, uh, yes, an alignment grid and a light table. I've seen plenty of people that uh, know how to draft, look at the ciphers and the Zodiac letters and how some of the letters were formed. And they said, this is someone using a engineering pin set with a tip on it. That's called a nib 
which you could you know do thicker and thinner strokes. It's like someone that can do calligraphy. This is the skill set that the Zodiac had. They, he, he knew how to draft. Um, that that I would I would I would uh, I wouldn't bet my life on like somebody did, <laughs> but uh, but uh, I'm about ninety nine point eight percent sure the Zodiac killer could draft. Well, I am a hundred percent actually. I'm just not gonna bet my life like someone did and was proven wrong. <laughs> Yeah, we need some more, more Braden stuff. Always working on Ted Braden stuff. There's, nothing makes me more happy than uh, new Zodiac finds and uh, Ted Braden stuff. So, um, you know, I actually did get uh, Richard McCoy's uh, DDR-214, and it was not easy to get. It was difficult. They, you know, I told him I was Richard Floyd McCoy's son. <laughs> I don't have the years, but um, I did get his DDR-214, which there's nothing really crazy revealing in it. You know, he got wounded in Nam a couple of times from shrapnel and stuff like that. I was trying to see where he got airborne qualified because I was always I always wonder if, uh, you know, if McCoy was didn't go through uh, Fort Campbell to get airborne qualified with 101st Airborne. And maybe he ran into an instructor there. Who was called Ted Braden. <laughs> but, um, you know, I just it's it's like it's Darren Schaefer's favorite theory is that uh Richard McCoy knew D.B. Cooper. He doesn't think Richard McC Floyd McCoy was D.B. Cooper, but he he has a theory that the, the real D.B. Cooper knew Richard Floyd McCoy, which is, which is I, I love that theory. That's so Darren Schaefer, by the way. Yeah, that's me. I'm the real, I'm the real decoy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I'll put that up. Yeah, there, there, you know, there was some, some stuff in there. Nothing I didn't really know other than some dates that, that he got wounded. Uh, for, you know, shrapnel runes and, uh, you know, some awards that he got. He had, you know, pretty decorated guy. You know, McCoy's parents were first cousins. That's true. Did you know that, Jim? Richard, that's, if you ever saw that, it's absolutely true. Richard Voy McCoy's mother and father were blood first cousins. So uh, make of that what you will. Thanks, Corey. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm looking for that. I will be advertising that Ross should be coming out soon. Actually, I heard from my friend Sean today. Love part one. And uh, he was talking about, he was talking about Ray Davis. And he's like, man, after listening to part of uh, the first part of the Vanish podcast on Zodiac. And by the way, if anybody hadn't checked that out, go to the community section of this page. And there'll also be a link to the first episode of the Vanish uh, Zodiac killer podcast. But uh, Sean heard that part. I think yeah, that lady you met Ross, that did the did the did the first article on the cab driver Ray Davis's murder and 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 my buddy Sean listened to it. He's like, man, I'm thinking that is definitely Zodiac. He he was like really like like I put that as like number one non canonical Zodiac crime that he now thinks could be Zodiac. And Sean knows the case really well too. So uh he got me starting to think about Ray Davis again. I go, you know, maybe so. I mean he was just going like how could this not be? You know, even though Ray Davis was 62 and then uh Gaviota 63. And, you know, I've always felt Gaviota was probably the most likely Zodiac if there was a non-canonical crime that was Zodiac. Uh, but now Sean's got me thinking Ray Davis again. So I don't know. Where, I, I, I'm definitely interested in anything uh, Ross has to say about that. Jump school would be at Benning. Yes, that's true. That's true. I think only Benning. I think it could have only been Benning back at that time. Uh, you could get airborne qualified at Fort Campbell up to a point, and then, then it stopped. But you're yes, you're right. I th think it stopped way before, way before it would have been McCoy. So it had to be Benning. But Braden was an instructor at Benning too, but um, wouldn't have crossed paths with McCoy. They were both at Bragg for like maybe maybe a week or two, so not even long enough to to have known each other. Definitely wouldn't have crossed paths in Vietnam. Uh, McCoy was there in '64, and he comes back, goes back to school. Uh, Braden gets there early 65, and by the time that McCoy goes back for his second tour, Braden's already gone. So it could have been Vietnam. Doesn't look like it could have been Bragg. Uh, you're right about Benning. Benning would have been the only place then, other than, you know, the early days you could do it at Campbell, but McCoy was younger, so definitely not there. So I don't know. There goes those dreams dashed. <laughs> but good point. You're right. It would have had to have been Benning. Zodiac Files episode four coming soon. The Gaviota deep dive. Yeah, I can't wait for that. That's going to be great, especially uh, you know everything about the ammo and uh, everything that you're digging up on that. So look forward to that on Planet X Filmworks. And if you have not already, hit the subscribe button for the for this channel and like this video and also check out Planet X Filmworks. There it is. Click on Ross's 
icon and you can uh, subscribe to that channel and get ready for his great uh, his great films. Tucson, all right. Always getting getting new people in. Thanks, Corey. So that's it for now. Hey, Chris. That's it for now. I mean, I really wish I could have done this other slide. Damn, because I thought because it's good. But you know, I want to make sure he's cool with it. But he'll he'll watch this. Maybe he's already emailed me and said, Yeah, I don't care. Go ahead and put it on there. I mean, it's not like earth shattering, but it's a, it's a really cool Zodiac killer find. It's not suspect related at all. Uh, but you know, you know me, I'm going to make it suspect related because <laughs> it does help me. Um, but it, but it, you know, but it, it's just a good, a good solid Zodiac killer find that I've not seen before. And I think, I think that one be one might be one thing that, uh, Stefan is doing is making sure that, you know, some dude did put it on Reddit 20 years ago and he looks like he's trying to take it or something. Cause he's, he's not that way. This guy's totally straight up and good so he's probably just making sure but i'm going to come back on and talk about that because i see the slide right here but i can't put it up but um but it's cool but that's all i have for now thanks for tuning in on short notice thanks everybody